Everybody goes through fiery trials in life, but in these fiery trials, we find freedom and we encounter God. How is that so? What does the Bible say? Coming to you from the radio studios of Souls Harbor Covenant Church in Miami, Florida, USA, this is Walking in Power, a dynamic life application Bible study with Bern Zumpano, anointed author and teacher of authentic Christian doctrine. Bern Zumpano's spirit-filled teachings on practical Christianity have touched and transformed the lives of many people who have opened their hearts to God's Holy Spirit as a result of Bern's instructional teaching. Burden shows us how Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and how He can change your life and circumstances. We invite you now to listen in with family and friends as Burn discusses Christian issues and answers that will teach you to walk in the power and the knowledge of God through the Holy Spirit. And now, here's Burn. Thank you, Glenn. Before we get started, let's pray. Father, on behalf of all of the people of Souls Harbor Church, And all Christians worldwide, I come together in agreement, firstly speaking our voice of thanks, praise, glory, honor, exaltation, and majesty to your holy name, to all of the men of the earth and to the ends of the world. Anoint the people worldwide with eyes to see and ears to hear. We agree that all demonic scales are broken off of their spiritual eyes and ears and that they will see and hear with the eyes and ears of your Holy Spirit. By the spirit of power and might of your Holy Spirit, we call a clear, wide, open, unobstructed path cut to the heart, mind, soul, and spirit of every person listening, and to every man upon this earth, and agree that you will shine your light and truth upon them and into them. We agree for and call in, by faith, the greatest spiritual end-time harvest that the world has ever seen. Also in agreement, we bind Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the princes of the north, south, east, and west, All principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, wicked spirits in high places, all territorial spirits everywhere, all ruler spirits over all communities and peoples worldwide, all spirits above, around, and below them, all spirits of Antichrist, lies, deception, religion, witchcraft, python, unbelief, doubt, divination, all spirits of harm or immorality of any kind, All spirits of opposition, hindrance, interference, and obstruction, destruction, murder, theft, the Jezebel spirit, the Ahab spirit, the Absalom spirit, all spirits of slander, scandal, rumor, libel, defamation, maligning, derision, opinionated spirits, rumor, and gossip accusations, and false accusations, along with all of their physical and psychic attacks, assignments, and operations. We loose all the peoples everywhere from such activities, assignments, and attacks and operations, and call their strongholds down and destroyed, canceled, made null and void, cursed and destroyed at their roots, never more manifested or come to pass, rendered of no effect, judged, spoiled, and never seated, and decree any and all retaliation, revenge, or getting even permanently, immediately, completely, and continually forbidden, all in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, And in the authority of his name, Father, this is our faith confession, and we believe that we receive in the saints said in agreement. Amen. Well, greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and friends of our radio listening audience. Welcome to our worldwide Bible study. We're talking about freedom in the fire, how God uses fiery trials and tribulations to help us to encounter him and why we must go through these things as part of God's divine plan for our lives. You see, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, there are fiery trials and tribulations that you go through through life. And if you have to go through them anyway, you might as well have God on your side to help you through, to see you through, and to bless you as a result. God's purpose in it is blessing. God wants to bless you. God's purpose in it is formation. He wants to form you into his image and likeness. And he promises that he will not abandon you. He promises that he will go through it with you. He promises that he will protect you. And he promises that through it, you will become a better person and you will receive a blessing of the kingdom. Now, to better understand this idea of freedom in the fire, we need to have a look first at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, where 
we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into a fiery furnace. They were three Jewish boys who were in captivity serving King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And the king had given a decree that the entire nation was to worship his god, who was formed in the form of a big idol, and the command was given by the king that when the music played and the cymbals clanged, that all were to bow down and to worship this idol. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were Jews who worshipped only the God of Israel, and they had sworn allegiance and faithfulness only to the God of Israel of Israel, the one true living God, and as such, they were not about to bow down and to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's idol God. As a matter of fact, they told him so. In other words, the first ingredient of their success was that they stood on the word of God, they stood on faith in the living God, and they walked by faith, not by sight. Let's take a moment and read the story so that we can talk more about it, because this directly relates to further discussions that we are going to have in this new series of discussions that we started today. Read them in the fire. And the reason it is, is because of the fact that the fiery furnace is a model, it is an example, it is an illustration, if you will, a uh, allegory of the experiences that we go through when we go through our fiery experiences of life. And the New Testament scripture tells us that those fiery experiences that we go through are from three sources only, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so the fiery furnace experience for every living Christian represents the trials and tribulations that we go through because of one of those three origins, the world, the flesh, or the devil. And we're going to get into each of those as we go along in our study. But the first thing that we must establish is how God works when we are in the fiery furnace or the fiery trials and tribulations of life in order to help us, in order to deliver us, in order to teach us what it is that he wants us to experience. So if you will, turn with me now to uh, chapter 3 of Daniel, beginning with verse 13. Let's read what King Nebuchadnezzar said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It begins, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, Let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the the furnace. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning correction, Mikey, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans 
and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished as he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were the garments affected and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made in ash heap, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. How about that? Well, let's look at this a little closer, because we have some important things to understand about this fiery trial and tribulation that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go through. The first thing that we need to understand is some of the terminology. Notice that uh, in verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar referred to the fourth person in the fiery furnace as his angel. He said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, capital H, capital A. This is an Old Testament title of Jesus. So, in verse 25, when the scripture uh, says that Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth man, and he said, And they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And in then in verse 28, he refers to him as his angel. This makes very clear that the fourth man in the fiery furnace who came on the scene when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put into their fiery trial, that fourth man was no other than Jesus Christ himself, the pre-incarnate Jesus, Jesus the Holy Spirit, who was on the earth and is on the earth. Now that's a wonderful thing, because there is a blessing that comes with the trial and the tribulation. Notice in particular that in verse 30 it says, The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So we learn from the scripture that ev- after correction, Mikey. So we learn from the scripture that after every tribulation comes the blessing. See, you must never give up, folks. You must never be discouraged. You must never throw in the towel and say, "I quit." You must never walk away from the faith walk. Never, ever, ever, ever. And if you have a loved one who is going through a trial or a tribulation. You must never give up on them. You must be in it with them through intercessory prayer to help them through, but they will get through. And when they get through and they are through with the tribulation or the trial that they are going through, God will bring a promotion. God will bring a blessing. And a blessing is a promotion. And so we learn from this 
that when God puts us through fiery trials and tribulations, there is only one reason for it. Number one, he's getting ready to bless you. Number two, in the trial and in the tribulation, in that is the furnace of life, you are going to have a God encounter of the first kind. Shall I say that again? You are going to have a God encounter of the first kind. That is, Jesus is going to come on the scene to intervene. Jesus is going to come on the scene to show himself to you, to show you that he is in it with you, and that he will see you through it so that No harm will come to you. There won't be any burning. There won't be any charred flesh. There won't be any smell on your clothes. There won't be any soot. There won't be anything. You will come out unscathed, and you will come out the victor. You will come out victorious. Why? Because Jesus is your Lord to lead you through life and your Savior to save you from sin and circumstances and self. And because he is, he will get you the victory because he has predetermined the victory for you ahead of time. In the book of Joshua, he said to Joshua to go on in and possess the land. And he said, For uh, I have given you the land this day to possess it. But guess what? They hadn't even entered in yet. And God said that he had given them the land. In other words, God predetermined the result. God predetermined the victory. Why? Because he is God, and he was in Joshua's circumstances. He was in the circumstances of the Israelites, and they were walking by faith, not by sight. At least Joshua and Caleb were, and that was enough for God. God would take care of the rest, you see. And if you have that kind of faith, just taking God at his word, the Joshua kind of faith, you will go into your promised land and you will get the victory even though you have to go through some fiery trials and tribulations. God will show you how to navigate the waters. God will show you how to get the victory. God will show you what to do and what to say. See, the Holy Spirit was already on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before they went into the fiery furnace. They could not have spoken so boldly to King Nebuchadnezzar, unless they were absolutely confident and had the word of knowledge that the Lord God of Israel, the Most High God, was with them in all that they were doing. And so they were not looking at the furnace. They were not lurking at the fiery trial or tribulation to come. They were looking to the Lord High God of Israel. They were looking toward their Savior, their Deliverer. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, He is able. So in other words, before their trial and tribulation began, they already had a faith confession. And faith confession brings possession. They already knew what they needed to say. They already knew what they wanted to say. And they were able to say it with confidence. And because of their faith, their trust, On the Lord High God of Israel, they had no fear about entering the fiery furnace. And they walked by faith, not by sight. And the New Testament equivalent of that is 2 Corinthians 5, 7, where Paul, by the Holy Spirit, says, We walk by faith, not by sight. And they walked by faith, not by sight, and they got into that fiery furnace, and the moment they got into that fiery furnace, Jesus, his angel, the angel of the Most High God, is one of his Old Testament titles, Jesus, the Lord High God, one with the Father, came on the scene and revealed himself to them. Where? In the midst of the fire. In the midst of the trial, God shows up on the scene. And in the midst of the trial, in the fiery uh, experience that you are going through in your life, and there may be more than one of them, okay, Jesus is on the scene if you are a believer. And he is there to deliver her. Correction, Mike. And he is there to deliver you. 
Now, watch this, okay? When you are in your fiery furnace, when you are in a tight situation, when you are in a trial and tribulation, and you are walking by faith, and you are confessing by faith, what God is going to do for you, God is going to send Jesus, the Father is going to send the Son to you, to your circumstance, his angel, the title of Jesus, okay? He's not going to send another angel, okay? He's not going to send Gabriel, he's not going to send Michael, he's not going to send anyone, he's going to come on the scene himself, okay, and he's going to survey things, and he is going to take over, and he is going to see you through and see you out of the furnace. Look at this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got out of the furnace, unscathed, unharmed, the fire couldn't harm them, in other words, the circumstance could not harm them, now why? Here's the point. When you are in a fiery circumstance of life, a trial or a tribulation, and you are walking by faith rather than by sight, natural laws are suspended, including physical laws that operate the universe, and supernatural laws are in effect over natural laws. Supernatural laws, when they are operational, suspend natural laws. That's why you see miracles. That's why you can see the resurrection of the dead. That's why you can see a healing. That's why you can see a demon cast out. Because supernatural laws are in effect and natural laws are suspended. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego determined that they were going to walk through their fiery circumstance, their trial and their tribulation by faith, and so the supernatural laws were in effect, and the natural laws were suspended, and they were able to walk around in the furnace with Jesus, and the fire could not burn them, and the fire could not harm them, and the fire could not stain their clothes, and or nor could the smell of the fire be impregnated on the cloth that was on their body. Why? Because natural laws were suspended and supernatural laws were in effect by faith, which is trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, i got to tell you something, folks. This is Bible, and the Bible is true. Scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. The word of God is truth, the Scripture says. Numbers 23.19 says, man, uh, uh, correction, monkey. Numbers 23.19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. So if we take it by faith, we know that we know that we know that God will use our faith on him to get us through our fiery trials and tribulations. Now, if we know that, we can become equipped to face those fiery trials and tribulations of life which we have to go through in order to be formed in the image and likeness of Christ. That's what the New Testament calls baptism by fire. And as long as we know that, and we know how to trust on Jesus, then the three sources of the fiery trials, the world, the flesh, and the devil, can be subdued by our walking in the word of God, which is the word of Christ, Christ walking with us, and telling us through his word how to respond to each of those things. In our next broadcast, we're going to discuss them one by one. And so I want to invite you to tune in next week with your family and friends and uh, listen to the continuing teaching on freedom in the fire. Now let me ask you a question. Do you know the fourth man in the fiery furnace? Is he real in your life? He is not Mohammed. He is not Gautama the Buddha. He is not Ramakrishna the Hindu. He is not Lao Tzu, the uh, uh, Chinese philosopher or Confucius. He is not the Pope. He is not your local priest. He is not your local minister. He is not me. He is a unique and divine spirit person who is alive and who will reveal himself to you as a living person, but if you will reach out to him first to get the revelation. He's a perfect gentleman. 
He will never reveal himself to anyone unless he is invited. And he will show up on the scene for you just like he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But in order to appropriate or take possession of all of these blessings of the kingdom, you must be in the kingdom of God. Not in religion, in the kingdom of God. In relationship, personally, to the living God. One with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Would you invite him into your heart right now? Today's as good a day as any. He will change your life by changing your attitudes. Pray this prayer with me aloud, will you? Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I repent of my sins, all of them. I turn from them by my own free will. I renounce them. I ask your forgiveness. I invite you into my heart now to be Lord and Savior. That is, to lead me through life and save me. I confess you before men as the resurrected Christ. Come into me now, Lord Jesus Christ. I receive you by trusting faith and faith alone. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, get yourself into a Bible-believing, Spirit-filled, non-denominational church. Get water baptized by immersion and Holy Spirit baptized. Get in Christian community where people will teach you the Word of God. And I promise you, my friend, your life will never again be the same, and you will begin to understand what the kingdom of God is and how it differs from impotent religion and the control of men over men. You don't want anything to do with that. Walk away from that and get into the kingdom of God where you can learn to have a relationship with the living God who will bless you and see you through your fiery furnace experiences. God bless you. Talk to you next week. This program was brought to you by the volunteers of the International Radio Ministry of Souls Harbor Covenant Church, Miami, Florida, USA. We desire that this broadcast become a spiritual nourishment and blessing to you. There's a lot of Christian entertainment and testimony activity on TV and radio worldwide, but there's a greater need for instruction in the Word and the ways of God. Our desire is to help fill that need. If this program has been a blessing to you and others, you may wish to become a contributor to this ministry as you feel led by the Holy Spirit. Your contribution in the form of an international money order or personal check stateside would be greatly appreciated to carry on God's work and to keep us on the air. If you can't afford to support us financially, please be our covenant partner through your prayer support. Pray that our mission will be carried out according to God's will as we carry out His command that our voice go into all the earth and our words to the end of the world. We pray that this program is a blessing to you and that you'll tell others about us. Burns' classic and timeless Bible teachings given over many years past are highly anointed and are now available on cassette tapes along with his books and other ministry materials that teach the believer to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to hear from you. Write us or send us a postcard with a clear return address requesting our catalog or making your comments. Our address is Walking in Power, P.O. Box 161322, Miami, Florida, USA, 33176. Or for telephone orders using your credit card, call toll-free 1-888-273-WORD. That's 1-888-273-9673. Until next week, we remind you that the Bible tells us that there is no salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, and that there is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved from our sins. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and as a living person, willing and able to get involved in your life, shouldn't you? Invite Him into your heart today to be Lord and Savior, and receive Him by a trusting faith alone. If you want to know more about the necessity of being saved, write us. And remember, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We hope you'll tune in next week at this same time as we bring you more of the Holy Spirit's timely Bible teachings through Bern Zumpano. Until then, God bless you and keep you in His love. Walking in Power is a production of United Ministries International. In Power is a production of United Ministries International. In Power is a production of United Ministries International. In Power is a production of United Ministries International.